Hey everybody, this is Doc Mack from the Galloping Ghost Arcade out in Brookfield, Illinois. It's Thursday, October 22nd, 2015, and I am joined here with Gamer of the Year, Pete Hahn. Hey everyone, how are you doing today? And uh, we've got a little bit of catching up to do, as we haven't done a podcast in a couple weeks now, so a uh, lot to discuss, a lot to go over. Yeah, we had a lot of responses on Facebook from uh, Doc, just did a, uh, hey, does anyone have anything you want to talk, talk about or any questions, and... We had a bunch of responses there, so I thought that was great. Yeah. Do you want to start on with those, or what do you want to start with? Scores? Or? Um, I guess, uh, yeah, let's start with scores. All right, cool. Um, I'm just, we're going to go back to as far as the scoreboard lets us, um, which is when uh, Steve Lucas was in town. Yes. And he put up several impressive scores all in the span of a few days. Yeah, that was awesome to yeah. uh, see how him uh, get into scoring. He's been here before, but... Uh, the first time he's really put in some uh, major scores. For sure, yeah. Um, so he had, um, I want to say, three world records. Um, he had uh, Blood Brothers, um, which was Lumbo had that. Lumbo had that, and then Rocco had that. I'm not yeah. sure who had it. Rec- who had it more recently? But they both have had that score. Yes. Um, and let's see what else did Steve. Uh, he had a, a Superman house high. Um, that was also Rocco's. I believe. That was Rocco. Yeah. Yep. Um, he put in, oh, you know what? His Gradius three score was rescinded. I forgot about that. Yes. Yeah, that was the unfortunate uh, Unf- miscommunication. Unfortunately, we had uh, two scores. Uh, one was his, and the other was... Uh, Jamie's. Jamie Tibbetts. Yeah. Um, there was a little bit of confusion in these settings, but that's been all cleared up now. And yeah, I, I made notes on Orcade, so now now that everyone's clear, we're, we're basically going back to the point where we know people weren't submitting scores on the beginner mode. Um, but yeah, that's you know I'll I'll own that we weren't clear on that as referees, so now we know for the future. Yes. So uh, let's see what else did Steven Lucas put up? Let me uh, let me check this out real quick. Well, while you're looking that up, I will uh, point out one of our most recent world record, which was set yesterday by you, Pete. <laughs> yeah. Um, just an amazing, amazing watching you play Russian Attack. Uh, congratulations for that. You put up a new score of 586,980 points. Yep. Um, how how do you kill that many people with one knife? Yep. It, the knife has to say leeching on the side of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's 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 a fair amount of point pressing going on in there, but the knife gets a lot of use, I will say. It, it's, it's about as used as Rambo's. So. <laughs> More so, yeah. I would say. Yep. Uh, just really impressive. And... Uh, as as gamer of the year, it's great to see you coming out of the gate, full charge ahead, and for sure taking down some of these great scores. So. Yeah, yeah, I know um, uh, Rocco had that one for a while. He had the house high. Oh, he, oh, that's right. Yeah, um, Mike O'Neill had it from uh, a fun spot tournament that yes. was in 2013, and that was the score I was trying to go after. Yeah. So. But I, I, everybody had jumped on playing Russian Attack recently, and mm-hmm. uh, just great to see you uh, get that. And accomplish. I knew you were going to. It was. Uh, I was telling you. Yeah, you said, "Oh, you're going to have that in a week." You always, you always give me more credit, and I think than than you know, like you 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 underestimate the game or overestimate uh, overestimate me, one or the other. It's you have some pretty laser focus. Yeah. And there's like there's some players here. They'll have their sights set on something, and they walk away after a while. But like you've consistently, it's. Uh, you're working on this, and you don't stop till you walk away with the title. So, yeah. Um, thank you. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you. That's <laughs> that's awesome. That uh, it, it's I'm I can't wait to see what you do next. Do you have any uh, stuff that you're scoping up on? And oh uh, yeah, I keep a list list in my back pocket of what I what I'm thinking What's your about. Top three. Top three I'm thinking about are Ghouls and Ghosts, which is a Martin Bedard score. So I'm sure that's yes. going to be hard to beat if I try to go after that one. Um, You'll have it in a week. <laughs> see, <laughs> doing it again. Um, the other one is another one that I'm considering is Dragon Spirit. Excellent game. Um, which is a change of pace for me. Like I'm not normally about the vertical shoot 'em ups, but I, I think I need to break my my mold of not being successful with those. I'm really not good at almost any vertical shmup I get into because for some reason or other, like I don't like either. I don't want to. Do the hardcore like I have to plan my path and do the chaining thing like Dodon Pachi Daiojo, or I just don't. I don't 
in my mind align things vertically as I well as as I well that I do horizontally. So it's hard for me to harder for me to play them, and I know this. I know it's a weakness as a player that I have. So we'll see. Maybe I'll try to go for it. Dragon Spirit definitely a super fun game. Super hard. It's great, great music, great graphics, great gameplay. Like everything's great about the game. I wish I was yeah. better at it. Like, I mean, if you if anyone's listening that hasn't played Dragon Spirit, I strongly recommend it. If you want to play a good vertical shoot 'em up, yeah, it's like it's like what Xevious should have been. Well, not should have been, but it was it was Xevious to the next level. It's like the yeah. bombing aspect of Xevious, but better music, better graphics, everything else, fantasy environment, better music than Xevious. <laughs> <laughs> That's not music. Um, so uh, okay, let's go back. Let's go back to Steven Lucas. You had uh, your third game too. Oh, that's right. Um, game three. You know, I uh, I was thinking either Final Flight or everyone's telling me I should go after Gradius three, mm-hmm. but I, I want to talk about that a little bit more later in, in in the later part of this broadcast. Okay, about that. But um, I yeah, it's 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 probably between those three. Cool. Yeah. Or maybe just totally something different. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> whatever, whatever I like playing is what I go after. Because I, once I stop having fun with it, I have a hard time doing that laser focus, like you said. And then sure. if I can't be focused on it, then my motivation is going to drop. Absolutely. All right. So um, Stephen Lucas, aka Crime Fighter. Um, oh, that's right. His other score he put a uh, house high up in Sub Rock 3D. Yes. Um, and then uh, he. Um, did I already say Spider-Man? No. Oh, okay. Spider-Man, he did a new world record. Um, he had close. He had the world record before, but he upped it by like three or four times. So he, he really improved his world record on it. It's awesome. Um, and he recorded all of his gameplay, so we can all we can put those on YouTube later. But he recorded almost everything he did over the weekend or the the time he was here. Excellent. Um, so yeah, those those were his main scores: Blood Brothers, Spider-Man, Superman, uh, Sub Rock 3D were his main ones. Very cool. Yep. Congratulations to him for some awesome scores. For sure. Uh, and then uh, shortly after that, this was uh, the 14th now, uh, Jamie Tibbetts upped his world record in Airbuster. Yes. He, uh, he went for a higher score and his one credit clear. I'm not sure if he got the, the no miss, the no death run. Yeah. But uh, he did increase his score, and I know he put that run on his YouTube channel. So Very cool. It'll be uh, up there for people to see. Very deserving that he got that uh, Kane Co. Airbusters glove. Quest for the glove. The quest for the glove. He had uh, messaged me that he got his uh, boxed Genesis copy of the game. Now, is it the so. same the same name, or is it called something different in Genesis? Is it? No, it's Airbuster. Oh, it's Airbuster. Okay, cool. But yeah, congrats to Jamie. Always a master of shmups. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, next, we have uh, oh a few days after uh, Stephen Lucas left town, we had another another visitor, uh, Mike Waters. Uh, came in for a few days and did a, also a bunch of scores. Um, I want to say he did also like three or four world records when he was here. Yeah. Um, he did set up uh, a new world record on both games in the Wild West, uh, in the West, the Western theme cabinet, <laughs> uh, Cowboys Moo Mesa and Sunset Riders. He beat both of those world records, I think maybe in the same night. So. Yeah. Um, which is super impressive. Um, he's, I think his... Uh, Sunset Rider score was uh, previously held by Tibbetts, so he said he was going to try to possibly take that one back and go for the one credit clear. Very cool. Um, and then he beat uh, Slips' uh, Ninja Turtles, uh, Turtles in Time. Turtles in Time. Yeah. yeah. Which is kind of impressive. Slips is really good at that game. Um, and then what else did he put up? Was there one more I'm thinking of? That oh, Crime Fighters. That was it. Oh, okay. Yeah, he uh, his Crime Fighter score um, he set, and then uh, Aaron Ozen speed it at T uh, twenty. Yes. Um, so then he came back and upped it once again. So we'll see if uh, Aaron wants to come back and try to challenge it again. I I know he does. It's just a matter of time before he uh, can come back out. So well, that's awesome. We have got a good back and forth then. Absolutely. I like seeing that for sure. All right. So uh, next we had uh, James upping his personal best on Qbert. This is on the sixteenth. Um, what else do we have going on here? We have a new Lethal Enforcers uh, world record. I know uh, Haruza held that before, and then we had uh, a player I'd never um, seen before came in and just beat it barely. And now we have another player beating it. His name is uh, Tim uh, Kasevi, C S E V E. So congrats to him for putting a new world record up on Lethal Enforcer Enforcers. Um, I, w- I, st- on, I was here on Sunday and. Uh, Met a gentleman by the name of Ron McCarthy. Watched him play uh, Roadrunner, 
Um, just he knew that game so well. Really? Like just uh, he did one try on it that I saw, and he took uh, James's house high score. Wow. And uh, just great watching him. He knew it's great to see somebody know a game that well. Mm-hmm. Um, he, I believe, was out in from in from Michigan. Cool. And uh, he said he had his sights on a couple other games, including he said he had three games that he could play very well: mm-hmm. Roadrunner, Us versus Them, which mm-hmm. is another James another White game score. score. Yeah. Um, he he says he back in the day he used to one credit clear it, so next time he was in, he wanted to play that. Cool. And then uh, Darius. Which one? Went the da- first one? The original Darius. Oh, nice. So whenever we have that on the floor, he's anxious to come in and put up a score on that. Very so. cool. That Sunday, actually, we also had uh, one of our, uh, the guy in from Japan who uh, had talked with, he had been in here twice before. Mm-hmm. Um, and me and uh, Will had talked with him the second time he was in, and we learned that he was working on opening up uh, an arcade in Japan. Really? And was just based on, like, the, the concept the concept of the, the Galloping Ghost Arcade. That's awesome. And his doors are now open, and uh, just, he had, he was showing me pictures, and he, he spoke very little English, mm-hmm. but we were communicating through Google Translate, and nice. <laughs> showing each other photos of uh, games that, like he showed that we had a, uh, he had the sit-down version of, the smaller sit-down version of Galaxy Force. Nice. And he was very interested in our Galaxy Force, too. Mm-hmm. And just amazing that somebody would come in from Japan and be that passionate about arcade gaming. That's and, really cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's uh, definitely, it was great seeing him again. So, Is he a high scorer or was he just into no, play? No, he he's just into play and cool. see what we have and he took a ton of pictures. Cool. Um, so, Do you know the name of his place? I do not. It's probably in Japanese, not. right? He invited, he invited us out there. <laughs> so nice. I am looking forward to it when we have our Dark Presence uh, tour, tour. A little yeah. world tour. Nice. They want to be out. Definitely bring the game there. So cool. All right, going back to some scores. We had a, a new King of Fighters '98 uh, world record, Jose Rodriguez. I believe uh, that was a Norbert score before. Yes, I want to say um, beat Norbert by a little bit on that. Um, that's the seventeenth. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, um, let's see what else. Oh, your adventure score. No, that. What would it, what, James put up a new venture score just today, uh, right? Just earlier today. Yeah, that yeah. Uh, I know he had. Uh, he's broke one hundred fifteen thousand. Yeah, one fifteen nine hundred. I think was his best today. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it is. It's it's really uh, like it's got a really long standing world record that I hope he can challenge. It's like around three hundred something thousand. Yeah. So maybe uh, at some point James can challenge that. I you know that game again. I had uh, very happy that we got that game. Mm-hmm. Um, I had played a lot on the Atari 2600. Uh, I've never seen the arcade version anywhere, mm-hmm. so uh, just just having it here is really, really great. And it was a fun project to uh, get up and running. Mm-hmm. Um, we, uh, I heard on some main tournament that's coming up, there's a, a bounty on if yeah. you can complete it. That's, so That's cool. In that in that vein, I want to throw out my own bounty on that. Okay. And if you are able to complete all the dungeons, I believe there's 44 in total. Oh man. Okay. Uh, so you do have a world record automatically then. At that well, point. you would have the world record for sure. Because James is getting a hundred thousand, getting to like eight levels, right? Like uh, he's getting past that. I think oh, he's he getting into level three, so he's passing probably like twelve levels. Twelve levels. I think okay. he's getting to the fourth. The fourth board. I believe so. Fourth board of levels. I believe so. Okay. Um, I think it gets really hard. Like the enemies are supernatural dodging. Like you cannot shoot these enemies. Like the, the like I think they're they're the best AI I've ever seen in a game. <laughs> they know how to dodge. Like they just read your inputs. I guess they they know your well. Literally, they will move things. Yeah. It's uh, I've seen some abnormally. There's like just large jumps for the character. <laughs> that's they just reappear. <laughs> They don't disappear. It's like they have their normal moving pattern, and then they're like, oh, wait, I can move a little faster. (laughs) And uh, They got adrenaline boost. They do. They do. Like, you can tell when uh, the computer is like, no, that guy can't die yet. Mm -hmm. 
I'm still trying to figure out what's controlling that if there's a certain order that you have to kill them in there might be an, like an, an invisible rank system going on like if you haven't died in a while like it just decides the enemies are harder for now possibly yeah. that, that's, like a shmup it, it might play like that yeah. I know by the time you get to the third stage the overworld levels are just they're just brutal um, oh, before you get into the rooms? Even before you yeah, get the, into like the, the rooms. Yeah, the Cthulhu's are like moving at super speed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that what those things are, those massive things? They look like Cthulhu's to me. Yeah. That's, they're that's octo- what I call octopi them. Octopi or something else, I don't they're, know. They're awesome. Squidlies, or <laughs> I don't know what you want to call them. Really. <laughs> uh, let's see, what else do we have? But yeah, oh, uh, so you had a score inventor, and then Jane, like you showed him a secret, then he out- ousted your score. <laughs> you're like, James, watch this. Okay, now you're taking my score. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, <laughs> I am, uh, that's we can get that, into that knowledge. Yeah, that's the knowledge. Knowledge is power. It is. It very much is. Let's see. Oh, um, Monday, also, when, when uh, Amasis was here, he put in a bunch of scores. Um, I'm, I think there's a bunch of personal bests that he put in for Metal Slug, Spider-Man, and Gradius 3. He's, he's nearing uh, Eddie's score on Gradius, and uh, oh. I just had to double-check with him that it wasn't done on the beginner course, but I think he's, he's nearing that score anyway. So Cool. Um, I saw him playing uh, Monster Bash. Yeah, he put up a high. Uh, James's house high is around sixty k, and Mazes did like twenty one something. So, well, I, I wonder if that's uh, in preparation for American Horror Scoring. If he thinks that's going to be one of the games. See, I, I like that that people are speculating. I absolutely, that's yeah. really cool. Yeah. Um, and then uh, that almost gets us caught up. Oh, we had uh, Brian Shillo up his personal best on Russian Attack last night. He's at two hundred ninety six k. Um, I want to say that's it. Cool. Yeah, yeah that's, it. that's it for scoring as far as all the updates that, uh, that we can go back to on our scoreboard it's like yeah. since the 13th. I think we, we might have missed a couple because the last podcast was on the 5th, but apologies if we forgot your score. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, when uh, Masis was in, we were able to give him his uh, Ace of Atari Week plaque. Oh, that's right. I saw the picture on Facebook. Yes. Yeah. Very and, cool. Uh, we have... Uh, our own plaque on display, so uh, his achievement will always be recognized here. The Ace of Atari. I uh, I saw his comment on on our last podcast. He's like, "I'm going to assure that Peak Wars does not repeat as horror scoring champion." Wow, that was a pretty strong statement there. That's so we'll see. That's bold. It is very so what we like seeing uh, the competition. Strong yeah. competition. Strong yeah. but friendly competition. Yeah, as long as it's it's friendly, you know, a score is a score. Um, well, as long as we're talking about horror scoring, um, is it okay if we uh, announce the prize? The prizes? Sure, right here? sure. We can so, announce the prize. Uh, we're, uh, besides being crowned the king or queen of Horror Week, we're going to be doing a cash incentive this time. Uh, we're going to have the top three prizes, uh, top three places uh, pay out. So uh, the top prize uh, for the entire tournament is going to be $100 cash. Not in uh, tokens or anything like that. <laughs> Uh, second place is going to be 50 and third place is going to be 25 so we're going to have a little extra incentive to come out and put up some great scores so hopefully we can see some uh, more people come out and and uh, possibly get some out of towners absolutely yeah it's uh we might also have a few more surprises yep we we always like to uh curveball a little curveball yeah. going on cool we'll see we'll see awesome so yeah, um, if you are uh, not if you're new to our podcast, uh, last week we talked about horror scoring. Uh, it's a it's a tournament we run every uh, last week of October, but basically it's thirteen horror themed games. Uh, this is gonna, gonna be the second or third one we're running. This is our second. S- second, okay. I believe I I I couldn't remember. We I know have done a tournament around there where where we had horror themed horror themed games, but it wasn't American horror scoring, and I think it might have been more. Just part of something else. Okay. So yeah, basically it's thirteen horror themed games. Um, right now we're where we've narrowed the selection down. We're just fine tuning everything, making sure we know how to track scores on it and getting everything set up so we can hand a nice uh, list to everyone on the first day of the tournament, which is Monday the twenty sixth. Uh, the tournament runs all week and ends at the close of business Saturday, the thirty first on Halloween. Halloween night. Yep. So it should be should be very good. Should be a lot of fun. Definitely gonna looking to have Halloween here be a lot of fun we probably are going to do uh, as we've said we're doing some event uh, I haven't made the official post yet but uh, definitely expect something cool going on here for Halloween yeah expect uh, streaming um, we're going to be doing more streaming during the tournament uh, we've been streaming more uh, actually this whole week um, since we've got the wireless stream working I think we've streamed every day so far Yeah. 
Um, we Huge had shout outs to you for getting that all set up oh, yeah. and running nice. It's uh, we definitely want to keep expanding on it, and uh, we want to do more direct feed streams and just we're we're working on a lot of things all at once. Mm -hmm. So Excellent. everybody can expect a lot more coming soon. Yeah, because I I mean I think that our players here are so outstanding that we need to show them to the world, and and I think the streaming is the best way to do that. Oh, absolutely. So it's like. I want to show off the talents that we have here, because um, YouTube, you know, it doesn't capture the spirit of what's happening in the moment. You know, you don't necessarily get, you know, it's not it's not timely. It's like it's pre-recorded. So, I think the the Twitch stream is going to be the way for us of the future. We're going to do a lot more of it, and hopefully, the tournament will see a lot more of that coverage as well. Absolutely. Like yesterday, uh, we had just put Venture on the floor yesterday, mm -hmm. and James came right in and started streaming it. And it's like, what a great way to. Uh, see a new game here mm -hmm. and even like learn it a little bit so you have a little bit of an idea of how to play it by the time you get here yeah when you get in you can use james's mistakes to your advantage <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, all right so um we have a bunch of facebook comments that we can go up on or do you is there any other topics you want to cover first or? um i guess the only other thing is uh can go over uh we also added today we had adventure to the arcade floor yesterday and today we finally added Cosmic Cruiser to the arcade floor. Great looking cabinet. Absolutely love it. Yeah. It's, uh, it was a, a game, a Brian Cullen game, mm -hmm. which uh, was the main reason we got it. Was it, it was a game that he created. We were trying to get it for our uh, developer's day where Brian was in. And uh, we picked it up from Mike Beal. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, he sold me my contra board. Nice guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. great guy. Yeah. Great guy. Um, it had some issues. It was uh, supposedly missing the uh, mirror inside of it. But oh, that reflects the little guy. Yeah. Yeah. That that cabinet. I'm I'm gonna be working on a new video showing off that cabinet because that is the most amazingly. It's elaborate. The, the design yeah. is just incredible on it. Yeah. So we really want to show that off and uh, look for a video on that. But uh, that's that's on the arcade floor now. Yeah. Uh, Seth was telling me like. Some people were saying, like in Mame, like the the sprite doesn't show up because the part that's reflected is physically there. Like it's not programmed into the machine, like yeah. into the program code. There is um, essentially in the cabinet. There is a little plastic ship, like figure, that has yeah. Captain Cruiser in it, <laughs> and it spins around, and uh, you actually see it in the playfield off this mirror. Mm. And uh, there's no sprite for it. They sh the laser, the uh, tractor beam that comes out, like the there's this blue the tractor effect, beam yeah, yeah. is in the game, but the actual ship itself isn't. Nice. So that's one you'll never see it. Mm -hmm. uh, like you'll never get the real experience. And playing it on an emulator, it's not the same. Yeah. It's it's just not. Yeah. It's just not. So we are very happy to. There's very few out there. I think there's only one other arcade that has it, uh, according to Orcade. Mm -hmm. Um, so very happy to have that. I know Brian. I had uh, uh, spoken with uh, Brian earlier today, and I believe he's coming in early next week. So can't wait for him to see it and, uh, and have him play it again. That's awesome! Right when they get to see their own you know, creation in, in the in the wild. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, any other I th things? Let's, or let's uh, get on to these questions. Get on to the Facebook questions. All right. All right, Tim Foley is asking, uh, are there any high scores that you uh, have a hard time believing are attainable or world records that might have a cloudy past when it comes to verification? It's a really good question. That There definitely are. There's, um, there's a lot of twin, like there was twin galaxy scores uh, from back in the day that we've heard. Uh, multiple uh, times from multiple people. Multiple times from multiple people that are just, Erroneous. Like, this wasn't, yeah. yeah. Um, that's one of the good things with Orcade. Uh, there's a little bit of freedom as to like we want to acknowledge this score, but we can't acknowledge the score because like if you look on some of the Capcom fighting games, yeah, uh, Alien versus Predator. Uh, this the, the the lead the top score on the Twin Galaxy scoreboard has a seven as a last digit. That means seven continues were used. Right, that score is obviously not valid. Right, yeah. 
And there's there's a lot of there's a bunch of that with Capcom games in general. Yeah. And there's it's just such an obvious tell mm-hmm. um, why those get through. Just the adjudication is it's just missed or yeah. or whatever. They didn't know uh, that that's why that di- that digit is a seven and not a zero. And right. um, some other standout ones uh, I've heard. Um, Kung Fu Master. Yeah, I've heard that too. Uh, I've heard there's, I believe, Robotron is one that that score isn't a possible score. Really? Like the last, the last digit is not right. Okay. Um. Yeah, there, there's just so many. Um, I know. I mean, there's it's it's a system based around humans entering information into a scoreboard, so humans can make mistakes so that's how this happens for sure just when there's no way to correct the mistakes is there that's when the problem arises well it's something in my big what i want for high scoring i i for it to hit that next level um i think so many elements of it have to be really re-examined like the foundation that was started with walter day like it has been amazing but it it's becoming there's so many people putting in scores and to get that true what is the world record Mm -hmm. uh, I think a lot more information needs to be brought up and I think a lot more like unfortunately we might have to reset some scores right to get to a true number yeah Um, it's a a big huge debate going on now in in classic gaming because like a lot of the scores in the past there there exists no proof we're just taking a referee's word for it absolutely yeah and there's, like with all the new players, like there's new elements that go into it. I'd, it's it's hard to say, but like there are, I know Road Blasters was one that was always questioned. Mm-hmm. Um, there's just a plethora of them. Yeah, there's uh, someone commented, um, Marco, I believe is his name, um, saying that the Centipede score, you know, he had doubted because um, he said, you know, he, saw, he watched Duke play a 45-minute game of Centipede you know, and got 700K, and he's like, the world record's 16 million. How is that even possible? But right. that type of score is actually possible. Um, you have people with enough skill to build up enough guys in a, you know, in a marathon game where they can let guys die and take bathroom breaks and sleep if they need to. Right. Um, that Those kind of scores are actually possible, and some of those scores, well, they look unbelievable on paper. Um, that's why we can't just dismiss scores, because those... Um, we still see some of those performances from time to time. For sure. Yeah. It, I, again, we bring it up often. Matt Matt Rocco. Yeah. Uh, was playing all the way through Rolling Thunder, mm-hmm. and it was like the score was so drastically different, and uh, we were able to verify it. It's like no, that was a legitimate playthrough. He's playing very. The guy that had the record was playing very differently. Yeah. He wasn't playing for progress. He was playing for points. Right. He wasn't trying to beat the game. He was standing in the areas which netted him the most points. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's even with NARC. Like, I've had people uh, be like, how'd you get that NARC score? <laughs> and <laughs> Like, nudge you, like, show me something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I'm more than happy to, I can, I can back it up. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, um, Street Fighter was another one. Yeah. Uh, I forgot, someone questioned that score. Ken, Ken Williams yeah. questioned a score that was standing. On Street Fighter, and he's like, "Oh, look at this math. This doesn't equate out to a possible score." Right, but we had that score and, beaten several times over now. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, I guess you you, you want to respect the scores of the past, but you don't want to dismiss them without really investigating hard. You know. Well, and that's yeah. the thing. It's it turns into a very big process of we need to get more information on some of these scores, like the stuff that is in question. Um, like we gotta find the player that that did the score yeah. um, that's the nice thing about Orcade is since it's relatively new and we really take our time and get email addresses and contact info for the players it's and and especially now it's like you can just come up to the counter and ask for a camera if you're going to do a sure. score and that's the thing like if, if you're going to set a world record you, you're going to you're going to have a video of it I mean every every teenager has a cell phone that they can take video with you know right. it's, there's no reason to not have video of your performance now right absolutely um so like that's I don't know that that just goes into like a lot of things like score performance just being all public you know that's a whole other can of worms we got into once but now that people can record it there should be no I mean the burden of proof is is on the person submitting the score now 
Right. Not on, you know, a, a, an adjudicator. Absolutely. Um, there was something else I was going to say on that. What were we talking about before on that? There was how you wanted to have more information. Um, oh, that was on, like, leeching. Oh, I that's believe. right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Playing, playing the game <laughs> differently. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, oh, Tim Foley adds, and maybe a plug for his Outrun he's trying to sell. So, if you're looking to buy an Outrun <laughs> cabinet, talk Tim to Foley. Tim Foley. He's your guy. <laughs> Outrun's a good game, though. Great game. Sega. Sega. Martin Medard has the score on that, I believe. Uh, yeah. He said it here when he was in town yes. uh, last time. All right. Um, John Matthias asks, if you each had only to own five cabinets, what would they be? I I, I don't know. <laughs> Narc, I can tell you for one. Narc. Ninja Gaiden? You know... Operation Wolf? I don't know. I There's too many. There's too many. Like, I would have a JAMA cabinet that I could switch the boards out whenever I want. <laughs> That's kind of what I'm doing now. I mean, I'm waiting for my Konami adapter... But I'm going to play Russian Attack, and when I'm done with that, I'm going to put in Tekken. When I'm done with that, I'm going to put in Contra. I only need one cabinet if it's Jamma. Right. Well, like, right. But yeah, I mean, I guess those five boards would be. I don't know what they'd be. I I don't know if uh, for me, I'm I'm past that point. I don't know if I can answer it anymore. It's uh, you have them all at your disposal here at the arcade. R- right. Yeah. Right. It's uh, they all mean so much. Mm-hmm. So. I don't know. Like, how could you not have Primal Rage 2? Right. Or, like, Brian Colon's RC Squared, or, like, there's so many that... There's, there's stuff that, that's, like, essential now. Like, because yeah. you, you you can play it, and you know you can just walk to the arcade and play it when you want, but if the arcade wasn't here, you have to just think, think about that. If this arcade wasn't here... If, for me, my first three games were Narc... MK. Mortal Kombat 1 and Mortal Kombat 2. Okay. All right. My, I'll leave it at that. That's... My first game was a, an Ultimate MK3. Had it in my garage for years. Um, my second game I had was Primal Rage. <laughs> and then I got I, I got a, a sit-down candy cab, and now I've got a bunch of boards to put in it, such as Tekken Tag Tournament, Tekken 3, Russian Attack I have a board for, um, Contra. So I got a lot of boards. To, to play with now. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the. the Where'd that's you get my your uh, candy cab from? I got it from Chris at Windy City or Windy Gaming. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh. Uh, Windy Gaming. Uh, he does uh, does importing of candy cabinets. So if you're looking for a candy cabinet in the Chicago area or anywhere, he can he can set you up. He can arrange shipping to your area. Um, but that's yeah, awesome. definitely hit up Chris on Facebook on Windy Game Windy Gaming on Facebook. Very cool. He always comes out to our swap meets too. That's yep. It. Very so cool guy. Huge shout outs to him. Yep. Um, how do we decide the layout of the ghost? Now? Uh, now it's space-based, right? It's space-based. It's yeah. uh, Where can we fit this cabinet? Yeah. Um, originally, the arca- it's kind of broken down into sections. Um, it seems it's like developer and then genre. Is there's it- developer, genre, mm-hmm. um, and then there's like the, yeah, there's like some occasional like, the cowboy section, or there was the building climbing section that had rampage and crazy climber. <laughs> the climber section. The yeah. climber section. Yeah. There's a whole like vampire section now too. We got <laughs> versus Castlevania, haunted <laughs> castle. What else is there? There's a couple more there. Oh no, that's all. That's all in the area. Yeah. But yeah, then there. Oh yeah, the Blood Brothers, Wild West. The section. cowboy section. Cowboy section with gun smoke. Um, there's the Mortal Kombat section. There's the Street Fighter section. Yeah. There's the pinball section there's the shmups area yeah. the drivers um the layout is going to change drastically pretty soon um there's a few things that oh, just even like uh not having certain games grouped together is, until it bothers you it does yeah it does i i cannot wait like brian Collins games I want those all in line. I want all the Jeff Lee games together, mm-hmm. and uh, it's it's just difficult with our current space constrictions. But uh, we'll be fixing that soon enough. So cool. Um, but that has always been such a important thing is to have a good flow to it, and a little bit of nostalgia in one part uh, where the front row of games at one time was most of the stuff that my arcade that I frequented the most 
it was based on that lineup. Oh, that's cool. So I didn't know that. Yeah. That's cool. It's never exact, but mm -hmm. pretty close. Nice. All right, next question. Um, Jamie Tibbetts asks, uh, new regular segment idea, low-hanging fruit. You want to do this? You want to do this afterwards? Or you want to do it right now? Let's Low hanging fruit, sure, sure. Okay. Low hanging fruit, and what he's talking about there is scores that are within the reach, like house highs or whatever. Any score you think is within reach that people just haven't put the time in or haven't really explored the game, that would be <laughs> quote unquote easy to get in a minimal amount of time. Do you have any ideas off the top of your head? The, uh, there, uh, honestly, I know there's a lot. A lot of fruit hanging There's around. There's a lot of fruit hanging around. Um, I think a couple of my scores are, are fruity. <laughs> I mean, they're kind of low. <laughs> they're low. It's it's like going back through so many of the scores set in. If you see on the scorecard, if you see like a 2011, 2012, um, there's a lot of those that I know can can change hands right uh, fairly easily. Um, there's some like. Where, like, if the person hasn't completed the game, it's like, just go for the 1cc and you'll have a world record. Like, Ninja Gaiden? Yeah. That's super easy. Yeah, you were saying like, that. Like, that score is not a good representation of the, what the world record should be. You said the same thing about NARC as well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, because you said, like, before, you, your score was, Hon like, double that. Honestly, like, most of the world records that I have, mm -hmm. I feel are... Like Godzilla, Ultraman, uh, Ninja Gaiden, Narc. There's a lot of room left on all of those. Yeah. Um, they just don't have the knowledge. <laughs> just the knowledge. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Any yeah. of those. Any of there's those would be four good. right there. Yeah. Um, there's a few shmups I was thinking of that weren't really fully explored. Um, I think that Thunder Force AC could, could, could get. Thunder Force. Or rail. Mm -hmm. um, There's a lot of shmups that haven't been really fully like. If you haven't one cc to shmup, just go for that. Yeah. Um, a lot of I think, you know, once, you know, Jamie did the Airbuster one cc. You know, he started looking down the row. He was like, hey, there's some scores here we can go after. Absolutely. Yeah. I, as hard as and as intimidating as some of the scoring is here at the arcade, like you see so many of the same names, and it's like, oh, that score must be impossible. It's no. like. Absolutely. There's a lot of room. Yeah. Uh, a couple of mine, I'd, I'd say go for, like, Captain Commando. If anyone can 1cc that game, you can beat my score. I only made it, like, a little more than halfway through, maybe three-quarters through the game. Yeah. So that's that's one I would go for. Judge Dredd prototype. Judge Dredd, yeah. I think you got to the third level, right? Or James got to James the third level. James got to the third level. Yeah. So if you can get past the third level, you can have that score. Yeah. Um, let's see. There's got to be a couple more. That are... oh, there's, there's just, like, all of the... Like a lot of the King of Fighters stuff has been put up once and has and no never, one's been challenged. Nobody, yeah. it's it's mm -hmm. super low. Yeah, um, a lot of the uh, stuff. Some of the uh, some of the light gun games. Mm -hmm. I think Bruiser was saying Lethal Enforces wasn't all that far. I didn't. No. I didn't know. I thought it was kind of far. There's there's players out there. Like I remember when uh, Henderson, Josh Henderson, came in. Yeah. And uh, he's like one scene seeing like House of the Dead and Carnival, and, and it's like those are great examples of games that are like once you know where you're supposed to be and you just memorize it, you'll have that score no problem. Yeah, I think there's just a level of time you have to put into a game. It's like yeah, you won't be able to come in the first day and take that score, but maybe give it a week or two and yeah you can have that world record yeah. like it, it, it's, it takes time I mean it should take time it's a world record it's but, supposed to yeah but you know it's if you're if you don't want to spend months and months we're grinding out a score you know I mean, we can definitely point you in the right direction but I wouldn't expect to come in your first day and get a world record no no unless you're really strong and you play arm champs <laughs> <laughs> but and even stuff like um, I remember mission craft yeah Last time Matt Walters was in, or a few times ago, uh, he stepped up and he hadn't played that in forever. Mm -hmm. But his skill level had jumped so much. Yeah. And he hadn't been playing regularly, but he walked up and he put up an, an just an awesome, awesome first game. And it's like, see, that's cool. I mean, he's been playing 
Daiojo and other stuff that's much harder and his skill has improved. So right. You'd expect that, I think. Right. Yeah. Like, it takes a couple of games to kick the rust off and get mm-hmm. back in there. But uh, and there wasn't a ton of points to, for him to still get in that game. It's only a two-loop game. But right. as long as that is there, um, there's room. And it's stuff like Haley's Comet. Like, that. that's a perfect example. Oh, right, right. Of... Uh, not only did like that was a great world record that Rocco set. There's a first record. first world record set yeah. here, but the skill of the players here had grown so much that I think three or four of the players had revisited it. Yeah, and now there's three or four people that are at Rocco's score level. Like I think Pete Gores, Brian Keita, and Jamie and Rocco are all around the same. Well, level Jamie now. took it. Jamie, Jamie has it now. Yeah, put I think actually everyone exceeded Rocco's score. Or his original. I, I believe so. I could be okay. wrong. I'd have to double check that. But. Yeah. It was, um, it just, that's the caliber of player. It had just shot up. Right. And, um, it, yeah, you just have to look for some of the dates, like, on some of the cards. Yeah, look for 2011. Those are gold. Yeah. 2012 isn't too bad either. Um, but, yeah, some fighting games, that, you know, especially you mentioned all the King of Fighters, but, yeah, a lot of the fighting games don't have maxed out scores. They haven't been no. one CC'd. If you don't complete the fighting game, there's a lot of end bonuses. You can usually crush a score. For sure. Yeah. There's some, like, the ones, the World Heroes, World Heroes 2, um, all all the Samurai Showdowns. What about like, Double Dragon, the uh, Neo Geo Double Dragon? Who has it? Oh, that's Jamie's think, score. Jamie has Jamie Tibbetts no, has that. No, I think Jamie, no, I think Phil might have it now. Oh, okay. I'm not sure on that one. I'd have to double check, all but right. there's definitely room on it. Right. Um, yeah, there's a few fighting games like Third Strike. There's room on Third Strike. There is, yeah. There's a little bit of room left on like Garo and the Last Blades, but not a ton. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's it's there for the take. It's for the not picking. that. Those aren't easy ones for right. sure. That stuff, if you put in some time, you'll get them. But yeah, I think I like the idea. Uh, Jamie Jamie's idea of uh, low hanging fruit. Uh, should segment. we pick one game that everybody should kind of focus on? Make it make it the game the game of the week the low yeah. hanging fruit of the week low hanging fruit of the week like if uh, we'll give fifty dollars to whoever can uh, be the first to top the old score yeah be the first or the highest Hi- well, highest by the end of the week by the end of the week that's a good idea all right look for a Facebook post on that we'll, we'll decide a game every week it's the low hanging fruit of the week and if one <laughs> whoever has the highest score on that game at the end of the week gets the bonus that'd be awesome all right cool. All right, next question. Good idea by Jamie, though. Uh, Steven Lucas brings up Gradius Three, uh, the you know the difficulty select issue, yes, um, which we kind of already addressed. But uh, being, it being in Japanese, no one really knew what they were getting into. So now yeah. that we've kind of we've placed it in the in the rule set on Orcade, now it should be no con- you know there's no confusion. But uh, before that was on us, me as a referee, I take responsibility as not following up on players, making sure they were on the right track. <coughs> Um, so left, si- left side is the full game. Right side is the th- beginner mode. Beginner mode. So. Three stage only. Um, lower rank. You keep power ups after you die. Like you just go down one bar. Um, so that's a huge thing. If, I mean, the hardest part of any Gradius game is recovering once you die, and that makes it much easier. Yeah. So, um, yeah, he, he brings that up. Um, also, he asks uh, ex- ex- uh, expansion plans slash status as of now. Any updates? Um, was uh, construction is starting very soon. Um, we are redoing our tournament area. Uh, we we were mo- we were moving stuff today. Oh, nice! So it is happening very soon. The uh, contractors were here today, just doing some layout stuff. So very soon, very soon. Cool. Um. Dan Iacovelli asks on plans for adding a second floor. Is that in the future? Currently, uh, we are going to see where we get with this extra space. This should literally double the size of the arcade. Um, after that, yeah. We, after that, we're if probably we not going to fill that very quickly, are we? We have a hundred, hundred and twenty or so games. Uh, we have some big. Big games, but... Uh, I mean big footprint games. Not big, like, AAA games, you mean. Right, big oh. footprint games. Yeah. But uh, it'll it'll be a balance. Like, that option is still there. Um, 
We'll see. We'll see. It's it's possible. It's not the necessity right now, but uh, we're going to start just keep going it and keep upgrading as we need it. Cool. Uh, Jerry Colonna, Colonna asks if Galloping Ghost has any travel plans this year. And I'm not sure if he means by Team GGA traveling to tournaments or if we're going out to any other shows. Or I believe he means if we're going out to any other shows. We okay. do have... Um, See, currently I think we have three lined up. Um, we have a Halloween event that we're doing very soon. <laughs> yes. I believe next, next week. Next week, when Halloween is, yeah. Uh, it's uh, Red Moon. Okay. They're doing a big uh, Halloween event. I forget where it is, but we'll be taking uh, about 10 to 12 arcade games there. For their mini arcade that they're doing and big Halloween costume bash and cool. food and music and hopefully no beer on the cabinets. Nope, <laughs> no, that is a, uh, a first must a, mo a must yeah. that there is no no beverages by the machines while they're not in our building area. <coughs> then we also have, um, I believe, we are going to be at the planetarium. In November. Oh, that's right. You mentioned that before, yeah. Uh, taking six games there. And then um, in December, we are going out to the New Jersey Gamer Con. Um, still trying to hammer down what all we're bringing. The but, logistics uh, of that is going to be rough. Absolutely. Yeah. But uh, they've actually invited us as uh, the production side. Um, so we will be showing off Dark Presence there and letting people play that. Um, not sure what, if any, if we're going to be able to bring other arcade games, but we'll have to see. It's, uh, it's the first time the show is running. You can check it out at njgamercon.com. Um, and it, we're looking to go there and have a great time. It's the first show, so we're, we really want it to do well for, for them, and uh, we hope uh, people will... Check it out. Cool. Maybe uh, Richie Knuckles will be there or something. Yeah, he's local for there. You should it, hopefully it, see him there. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. Cool. Um, Alex Segundo asks, uh, next Shang Tsung's Fight Night, any updates? <laughs> that's, that's still dependent on the construction, isn't it? It is dependent on the construction. Uh, I had talked with Daniel Piscina this week. He stopped by in the morning. Um, he, we were thinking maybe in December... Um, we're we're still working on it though. It, yeah, it'll, it'll same thing with the swap meet, right? We just we can't put that together until the construction's kind of under control. Correct. Yeah, it's uh, we don't we got to make sure that we have enough space. Like that last one was so so big. It was so and, cramped. Yeah. Yeah, it was tight. I mean, that's but, good. A lot of people came out. We don't want to discourage that, but we just want it to be more comfortable for everyone. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, keep keep an eye out for Shang Tsung's fight night. Uh dates and uh we'll we'll post them as soon as we can cool uh dj tatsujin aka aaron austin's asks can you talk about the re uh, new release like sky cursor and whether or not they have a place among classics i'm not familiar with that game sky cursor they had it at midwest gaming classic it's like a retro style game right it is a retro yeah. style game um i believe it just showed up at the game grid out in utah uh, run by Adam Pratt, who runs the Arcade Heroes website. Sky Cursor, um, I got a chance to talk with the guys working on it, and uh, I know a lot of our Schmups players were over there playing it. And what it's a really cool game. Um, I was actually talking with the guy, uh, one of the guys that works on it earlier today, oh, cool. okay. as to why. Well, Where's ours? Like, <laughs> where, <laughs> we need a dedicated cab. Yeah. We do, we do. What a cool game. Yeah. Um, I think it does have a place here at the arcade. Uh, just, Shmups will always have a place. <laughs> Shmups will always have a place. It's, That's how uh, I feel, at least. It's You can definitely see that the guys working on it have a passion for classic gaming. And it's they're using classic hardware like it, it's a jamma board like it's how cool is that like mm -hmm. it's uh they're just trying to get something that's back into the feel of how games used to be where it's not 
a a sit down driver game and it's not a light gun game and it's not um, this giant environmental thing that you could never that takes up this huge amount of space or the golden tees or the golden tees that's like the that's those are the three like that you see everywhere now so right and yeah. it's silver strike it's mm-hmm. it's um, it's I think such exactly what the arcade industry needs um, I'm talking with them I I hope uh, they really push the game well because I think people were really digging it and I think it's with all these new arcades opening uh, I think new games will help revitalize the arcade industry on a different level very much what we're trying to do with Dark Presence. Like, we don't want to do a console release of it right away just because the arcade, you can see it. It's trying to come back. Totally, And yeah. it needs companies that are willing to do very unique, dedicated projects that are within the same vein as what people want are already getting in arcades. Like, or what they got in the past. So exactly. What they remember. Exactly. Yeah. So... Huge shout out to them. We definitely are are looking into getting Sky Cursors, so uh, we'll see where. I love that Schmops are coming back. Like the the whole. Like, Did they ever go anywhere? Not really. They just got more obscure. Yeah. Prettier graphics, but, but they never really went anywhere. No, that's, I just got into them, so they were invisible to me <laughs> before. It's true with all like yeah. most of the genre. Well, yeah. most with the fighting and Schmops, I would say more so than anything. Yeah, they've always been there driving and light gun like it's just the platformers and some of the like the classic smaller games that like you wouldn't you don't see stuff like that right uh all right next question norbert asks uh shout outs to norbert yeah shout outs to norbert Uh, any plans on bringing up bringing back the old version of uh shang Tsung's fight night when it was every fighting game and not just the mortal kombat's uh, <laughs> those were so much fun, but it's, I, you know, I honestly think we almost need a different event. Yeah. Um, there's something about Shang Tsung's Fight Night. For me, it is so much about getting the actors here at this point. Uh, it's really cool to have the tournament in, the, in Mortal Kombat, but it's so separate. Like, the people, there's... There's two different crowds. Like, there's the tournament players, and then there's the people here for the actors, I think. Absolutely. I mean, some people, it overlaps, but not many, I think, is a problem. I completely yeah. agree. Yeah. It's uh, the tournament players, they want to get in and get playing. Like, I remember that first one, it was uh, from open to close, just yep. tournaments nonstop. And, like, Samurai Showdown had, like, six people playing it. Yep. Uh, it was single elimination, just, like... Here, you're the winner of Samurai Showdown, and now let's go play King of Fighters. Yeah. And that was really awesome. It was very difficult, though. It's grueling. It, it really game is. Game to game to it's game, just yeah. grinding out, doing tournaments mm-hmm. day in and day out for the entire day. But it was a lot of fun. Um, maybe. Uh, you know, we should, we should just do, like, a fighting game night. Like, games on the arcade floor just... Just fighting games. Like, if you want to play those against other people, you just show up on this night and you'll have someone to play against is what we should probably do. That would be awesome if it can be... There's so many... It's hard to get them coming regularly, though. At the same like, time. At the same time. Because people are like, oh, you have Super Turbo. I want to play against... I'm good really Super- good. Who's here that's really good at well, Super Turbo? They're not here right now. Sorry. You know? Right, yeah. right. You know, um, but... If they could all show up at the same time, we could probably arrange some type of ranking system through Orcade to track that. For sure. We had talked with David Hernley several times about doing that, and uh, that would be amazing, but it's it's a scheduling nightmare. It is. Um, It's almost like its own league of gaming. Yep. Um, So I don't know. It seems like it would be logistically hard to do the, the whole big tournament thing again, but it's something we can always look at. For sure. Maybe once we have more space, it'll be easier. Well, yeah. yeah, absolutely. But to answer Norma's question, maybe in the future, it's it's just so hard with so many events. Like, we don't even get to run our annual events because there's so many. But maybe. I would like it. Cool. Um, 
Ryan Rardin, R A R D I N. Sorry if I misspelled that or mispronounced that. He uh, he asks if uh, games with multiple playable characters should have different scoring tracks, um, like in Final Fight, different scores for Hagger, Cody, and Guy, since they each have different potential. I kind of like the idea. That's that's a that's a really good concept. The a problem with that. Um, it, it does it depends on what you want out of scoring it's true yeah if you want a single what is, hey what's the world record for this game it is this yeah um, I don't think it's a bad thing to have these other tracks these other tracks as long as it's just um, like games like but then you're gonna run into Street Fighter where yeah. it's, it's like 30 characters it's yeah. 30 characters yeah. absolutely and that's a lot harder to track but I, I, I like here's here's what I like about this scenario um, I like Hagger but he can't score nearly as much as Guy or Cody but if I if I get further in a game than someone else with one of those characters I want to be recognized for that um, so you know, let's just say I'm able to one credit clear the game, but someone else who can play a guy doesn't one credit clear it, but also but has a score higher than me, that would feel wrong to me. But the reasoning behind, like Hagar does more damage, right? And he he plays differently. Totally. Yeah. Um. In a sense, you're getting to play almost how you want to play. Exactly, yeah. I want to play the guy that does the most damage. That's me in every game. Yeah. Yeah. But, again, when it comes down to... It's it's what are you getting out of that number? Like, the scoring number. Is it is it something that a lesser score should be recognized as this is the best under these conditions? Right, right. Um, on the flip side, then you're, then you're saying the only character viable for scoring, you have to pick guy. In a sense, yeah. And is that right? No, it's not necessarily right. It just it just makes it so I can't play the character I want to play. But that's just the way most <laughs> games are. Like if you want to do good in Ghouls and Ghosts, you can't pick the flame. You have to pick the knife. You know. Right. It just it makes it so you have to p- do certain choices. Absolutely. That's that's what it comes down to. Like, what do you find more fun? Beating the game with the character you want, or having the score on the name on your on the card? Right. You got to choose. It's yeah. And again, it's. Uh, I mean, I don't think anyone likes to use the flame in Ghouls and Ghosts, but... No, I don't <laughs> think so. I don't know why anyone would try to beat it with just that, but but that'd, that'd be funny. It's... But yeah, it is It is along those lines. Like, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what the answer is to that. Yeah, like, it's, it's tough. It's, it's it, a, can, it can be debated either way. For sure. Yeah. There's no right or wrong answer. Um, that's up to the... The ho- the scoring house in right. itself, like if that's something that they would want explored, they could tell the the operators, the operators to and the, the judges, hey, accept scores separately for this and this, mm-hmm. uh, and maybe you just do you acknowledge them, but they're not, not world, world records. records. Yeah, so that that's uh, what uh, Gamist Arcadia they used to do that for a lot of games. Like they had. I saw their, they still have uh, archives of their scores up, and you can see Final Fight, the top, you can see the top score for all guy players, the top score for all Cody, the top score for, our, score for all Haggers, <coughs> and you can see the top score for each one with, with and without auto fire. So there was a total of six different scores, you know, listed. Yeah. Um, so under these conditions, this is the top, this is the best score. Um, you know, and, and the auto fire thing is this one thing I wanted to talk about, but we'll probably end up doing that later, because that's kind of a debate in itself. Okay. Um. But yeah, like under these conditions, Hagger is at the top of his game. Got this. So, but yeah, I, I like that Arcadia tracked that. So it's good information to have. But you know, the, the Hagger score was always less than the guy score. So you have to pick guy if you want to score well. Well, with I don't remember uh, on our final fight. Did they actually finish the game? I don't believe they did. Um, Brian Shilo. He has a score. No, he didn't finish the game. He got to the last level. Like, he got to, the, like, before the last, like, final stretch. So he's he, he's not one CCing the game yet. Yeah. So there's still room. All right. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Um, and I think that's it of the Facebook questions. Let me double check. Okay. Again, we appreciate everybody uh, putting in their questions. Uh, definitely 
love getting you guys uh, all the info and answers to stuff that you're interested in hearing about. So uh, this, this really helps us uh, gauge what everybody is interested in and uh, helps us make the arcade bigger and better. So yep, yeah, that that was it. That's all the Facebook questions we had. Cool. Um, we had a we had a mostly just comments on the YouTube end of it and. Uh, yeah, um, if you haven't heard, we're also um, we find we are finally on uh, iTunes. So when yes. we when we get uh, our RSS feed updated with this podcast, you'll be able to find this on iTunes as well. But we always go to YouTube first because it's just easier to upload to. For sure. Um, any other things you want to cover? Or? Um, I think that's about it. Uh, should have probably one or two more games going up next week. So everybody, stay tuned for that. Some uh, cool rare stuff. Uh, one thing I know that uh, will be the only arcade on Orcade to have it, cool. so possibly the only arcade in the world with it. Um, yeah, it's uh, what else we have? Uh, just more streaming. Yeah, just want to do more. Ahead. Definitely, there'll be a lot more streaming yeah. coming up. If you want to stream, let me know ahead of time. Uh, I've had people contact me on Facebook. Um, you can talk to anyone here but um, I, I can usually have the equipment set out and ready at, at the game you're looking to stream like Duke was in last week and he's like Pete I want to stream Centipede and I had the, the laptop out there and everything was ready to go and, uh, <coughs> I had to leave for the day but everything was ready so John Ruza just had to click you know broadcast and that was it so if you let us know ahead of time we can get everything set up you know when it's busy if you come in and say hey I want to stream it's not the easiest thing to you know get everything out there but we can if we can have everything pre-set up while it's slow that makes it easier on us, so we'd appreciate that. Cool. Very cool. Uh, oh, one other thing. We've, uh, as always, the never-ending battle with game repairs. We should uh, mention we have uh, were able to get Battlezone back up and Sinistar. Yep. And we fixed the uh, audio issue on Flicky. Oh, really? I didn't which, know it. Uh, my lovely girlfriend, Danielle, will hopefully come in and uh, play that some more. Hopefully stream it. Hopefully. That'd be yes, cool. that would be awesome. Yep, she's incredible at that game. She is. Yeah, she is. I like. I, I mean, just one of those like we talked about it before. Like, it's just cool to watch. You know. Yeah. Yeah, it's one. It's one of those games I like to watch. It's uh, definitely fast. She definitely knows it. Mm -hmm. It's been. Uh, but yeah, that that's back working. Um, the uh, what else? What else? Oh, uh, Seth has just been. The sound's still working on Donkey Kong again. Yes, there was. The sound was. Out on Donkey Kong, that is back up. Mm -hmm. The monitors have been adjusted and fixed on uh, both Rampage and Rampage World Tour. Um, seems a few other monitor adjustments that we were doing, but uh, yeah, huge thanks to Seth as always for all his hard work and uh, making sure everything's running great on the floor. Yeah, he's always looking at at our Facebook too. So if you if you have an issue, if you don't mention to it mention it to us when you're here if you forget then you can message seth on facebook or post in the facebook group and seth will see it he'll he'll, he'll jump right on it private message us is probably the best way yeah that way make sure we see it cool cool but uh i guess that's pretty much it yeah cool well we thank it thanks to thanks everyone for listening uh this is doc mac with pete Hahn. And uh, we hope you enjoy this podcast, and we uh, hope to see you around the arcade soon. Yep. See you later, everyone. Thanks, everybody.